Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well today. In today's video, we're going to be trying a little experiment using something I found online in the Madeira shop. It's called Thermo... Thermo... Gazra? Thermo... Oh my goodness. Thermo... Gaz... Gaza. It's called White Heat Film. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing well today. In today's video, we're going to be doing an experiment with a new product I found online in the Madeira shop. It's called Thermogaza. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, white heat dissolvable material. Um, as somebody who primarily makes embroidery patches in their business, I'm always looking for ways to cut out patches quicker. And the idea behind this product is that you embroider directly onto it and then with either a heat press or I'm hoping an iron, uh, this material then kind of dissolves away around the embroidery, leaving you with a borderless embroidery patch. Or so I hope. So I learned about this product when the very nice lady from Madeira came to my house um, for like I don't know, kind of like a house call just to show us all the new products Madeira has. And she showed me this uh, Thermal Gaza, which to, in my mind is kind of similar to Madeira's badge film. Um, except this is more like a fabric rather than a plastic sheet. I got some of the B film or badge film by Madeira here just to show you a comparison. It's much more plasticky. Uh, the thermal gaza is made out of viscose so in my mind it's probably more environmentally friendly to use this than this kind of plasticky stuff and also this gives me good vibes because it feels more like a material. I feel like this is going to hold the shape of my embroidery designs better or at least that's what I'm hoping for anyway. I bought a meter of the Thermal Gaza. I'm not sure if you're meant to kind of like double it up um, as you would with B film, but just to, cause we're just experimenting, I'm gonna start out by just using one uh, layer of the stuff and cutting it to the size of my hoop, making sure that there is a little excess around the hoop so it clamps in nicely. Um, I don't feel like one sheet is going to be enough. But I'm going to try it just to see. And I'm using my magnetic hoop, which I got from Midwest Machinery. Do it that way. Um, and then just clamps together and I'll just give it a little tug on the edges just to make it a little bit more taut. I wouldn't normally do this if I was embroidering on a hoodie or a t-shirt or something because it would distort the material and might um, make the placement of the logo uh, go into the wrong position but as this is just going to be for um, embroidering a patch yeah I don't I don't know about this I think I'm going to use two layers so I don't want to waste my time. I also don't want to waste material, so I'd rather get it right the first time. Okay. So there's two layers of the thermal gas. We'll get it right at one point. I'm a little, little bit unhappy about this bulge here, but it's just because of the way the material's been folded and it's been in that like plastic poly pocket for ages. I've had this material for so long, but I'm only now getting around to using it. Let's try and straighten it a little bit. There we go. All right, I think that's as good as I'm gonna get it. So I've set up the embroidery machine with my chosen colors. Unsurprisingly, I am making a frog design um, but there are some sort of little cutouts on the frog, which I'll zoom in on in a second to sort of 
make it a little bit more challenging. It's not just one kind of uh, block design. Uh, one of the things that this thermal gaza is apparently used for is on items like uh, cashmere and for creating lace designs. So I am hoping that on my frog design, where there are those little cutouts, that the thermal, I keep forgetting what it's called, the thermal gaza will dissolve when I put the iron on it. Uh, the embroidery machine I'm using today is the Happy Japan HCS tool. I'm not using any stabilizer at all with this uh, thermal gaza. One, because it doesn't say two, and two, I thought if I was to use stabilizer, then that sort of defeats the purpose because the stabilizer won't dissolve away with the heat. So I'm just using two layers of the material and I have done a little bit of tweaking in my digitizing to lay down um, a thick underlay uh, beneath the design. So there's kind of like a mesh to hold the design up, much like you would do if you were using B-film. So on my design, you can see here there is a little hole uh, between the leaf on the frog and the main body of the frog. And I'd be interested to see if that hole um, like kind of dissolves away nicely. Okay, let's start. is now finished uh, that's how he looks in the hoop now let's take him over to the iron and see how he comes out to tell you the truth I'm not entirely sure what to expect uh, this material doesn't tear away at all like the badge film kind of just popped away um, I'm not really sure how it's gonna react when I apply the heat of the iron uh, I've set it to quite a hot setting I've set it to cotton um, there wasn't really any instructions on the website on what heat the um, iron or the heat press needed to be at. Um, if my iron isn't hot enough or it doesn't work, I do have access to a heat press. So we'll try that. Uh, I'm just cutting away some of the excess because, like I said, I'm not sure how it's going to react and I don't really want it to leave a mark on my ironing board because I'm quite fond of this ironing board cover. It's got flamingos on it. So I put down, this is just a little bit of stabilizer um, just to protect my ironing board. And right, I'm not, should you just like, should you rub it over? For how long do you need to rub it over? Oh, oh, okay, something's happening. That look. <gasps> wow. Oh, okay, you need to zoom in on this. That is really cool. Right, so first of all, I panicked that it was burning and nothing was happening, but look, it's literally just disintegrating. So if I heat that up again. like that, that kind of like um woven texture is just breaking away so obviously i don't want to leave the iron on there too long just in case i scorch my embroidery although i don't think that will happen the threads are pretty resistant to high temperatures maybe that's why they say to heat press it you don't move the iron around so much as you just leave it in one place for a little while It does come right away. There's no, uh, you've got the patience for it, you know, there's no, it doesn't leave an edge if you can grip it and just pull it away like that. You can see there. Oops, where is the camera? 
See that that edge is almost completely clean. Just these bits of extra. And this is what the leftovers of that viscose material looked like that I guess you can just put into the bin or hoover up or whatever. Since I had a few sheets of the B film already cut, I thought it was worth uh, stitching out the same design on the B film just to see how the two materials compare. I'm stitching the design out on the same machine, but I did make a few tweaks to the design as I do find it's harder to stabilize designs when using B film. So I made my satin stitch border a little bit thicker and also I increased the pull compensation on the green body of the frog. Another thing I did, uh, which I noticed on the previous design is because I wanted to give my patch a really solid base, I didn't do any like cutouts for the eyes. So it was black embroidery thread embroidering directly over green embroidery thread. And I thought some of the green was showing through the black. So I changed the stitch angle on the black eyes so that it ran in a different direction from the green thread underneath. And this stopped the green thread from showing through the black. And on the screen, you can see that very dense underlay I was talking about, which I did to hopefully provide a good foundation for the rest of my design. Uh, with the dense underlay, I'm hoping it will reduce the likelihood of gapping between the segments of the patch. And this, oh, <laughs> magnetic hoop is stuck to the ironing board. So this is the design stitch out on B film. B film can also be removed with heat, but I'm not going to use my iron on there because I'd, I haven't tried it before and I don't want, if it gets like tacky or gluey, I don't want this to be stuck on my iron because I also use the iron for clothes. But what I find with B film is that it tears away like super easy. So, I mean, in comparison to the um, thermal, whatever. So, in comparison to the thermal Gaza, this was obviously uh, much quicker to remove. Um, I mean, they feel, this feels softer, probably because it's been ironed with the heat. This one is still very thin, but what I will say between the two, although obviously this one was much easier to remove from the backing material. Um, I personally find B film quite a hard thing to digitize for. Like there's, you can hardly see them because obviously I, I know the B film is a little bit more tricky to digitize for, but sometimes you get like gapping around the edge, not so much on this design. Um, and I just personally felt that the Turmoil Gaza was a more uh, stable material to embroider onto. I mean, my favorite material to embroider onto is felt, but of the two, these are the results. And you can see on both of them, how like neatly that little hole has been cut out there. Whoops, we've lost a frog. So this one is the Turmogaza and uh, this one is the B film and yeah I would say for a, a first attempt I am quite uh, quite promising results quite pleasing results. Thank you for watching my video and I hope you found it helpful as somebody who runs an embroidery business I'm always looking for things to make running my business easier and quicker and sometimes I personally find it helpful 
to see people demonstrating products uh, online so I know whether it's worth me purchasing that product or not. And that is what I'm aiming to achieve with this video and on my channel. So if you have any particular product that you'd like to see me demonstrate, uh, leave a message down in the comment section below and um, obviously depending on the price um, I'm quite happy to purchase things and review them for you guys as is what I enjoy doing myself and like I said I'm always looking for ways to make my business more efficient so if there's anything you'd be interested in seeing demonstrated just let me know and I'll do my best to source it for you and give you an honest review. So please like and subscribe as it really helps my channel grow and keeps me motivated to continue making these videos. But anyway, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.